But first, the referendum campaign is heating up. Minister for Indigenous Australians Linda Burney has been campaigning in the battleground state of Tasmania with none other than left-leaning Liberals Bridget Archer and former Liberal Premier Peter Gutwein. Yes, campaign advocates have even been on the hustings in unlikely places. For instance, outside the members' entrance of Lords for the entire five days of the second Ashes test. Unconventional campaigning, if ever I've seen it. And there can be no doubt that proponents are feeling the heat. Otherwise, why would the details before the Australian people be changing so much from day to day? Johannes Leake captured it so well in his cartoon today. But the No campaign is upping the ante today too. Following up its highly effective campaign attacking Yes advocate Thomas Mayo for his extreme views, a campaign that went viral, we now have exclusive first access to this follow-up, which is going public as we speak. Take a look. Hello, my name is Teela Reid. I was part of the constitutional dialogue process. Teela has been there in the heart of creating a, a framework for rethinking our constitution. Referendum engagement group member Teela Reid. You have all these remarkable people like Thomas Mayer and, and Teela Reid. We have to understand this concept of the voice is the first step in redistributing power. There does need to be these tough decisions and reparations for what First Nations peoples have Loss. This notion of reconciliation, it's not enough. The voice is a journey. We begin to demolish the system that continues to oppress us. All these remarkable people. What we need is to get back to these radical roots of the Communist Party. It's going to be very difficult once we succeed for a government to ignore this voice. It will be powerful. Authorised by Matthew Sheehan, Advance Australia, Canberra. Well, there can be no doubt that this campaign is going hard. But for all of the corporate dollars being poured into the yes side of the campaign, it's $8 for every one that goes into the no side of the case. There's one obstacle that's going to be very difficult for yes campaigners to overcome. It's true they are great at leveraging Australians' goodwill for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Yes, they are prepared to cast nasty slurs like bigot and racist for those people who don't want to get on board the yes train. But if we compare this proposal to the most recent nationwide issue poll on a contentious social matter, it was same-sex marriage. And whatever your personal view, the strength in the Yes campaign there was that it rested on a concept that actually sits well with most Australians. And that's the idea that all people in this country are and should be equal. The Yes case for the referendum now depends on Australians accepting the very opposite proposition just a few years later. The idea that we should not all be treated the same in our law and our democracy, but rather that there should be different categories of rights in our democracy and under our law, and that those different categories should be determined by race. And to add more, that difference should be permanently entrenched. That's a really ugly concept, and it's corrosive to this nation's social cohesion. I'm not sure it can be overcome, no matter how well they campaign. The US Supreme Court has, in a recent ruling, started to demonstrate the way that this notion of equality should be understood in a pluralistic democracy. In a case decided last month, it dealt with the notion that it's possible to discriminate in favour of one group of people without discriminating against another. That was the proposition put to them for consideration. Well, the court listened to that argument and said the court said that race-based admission programs for universities were unconstitutional. It considered the discrimination in favour of African-American college applicants as being simultaneously discrimination against white and Asian students 
in applying for what were a fixed number of college places, arguing, I would suggest really compellingly, that one act of racial discrimination cannot be corrected with a subsequent act of racial discrimination. In doing so, it relied on and interpreted the 14th Amendment to the US Constitution, which provides for, among other things, the equal protection of all people under the law. Justice Clarence Thomas, himself a black American, held that discrimination is always wrong, regardless of the intention behind it. He said, quote, I've long believed that large racial preferences in college admissions stamp blacks and Hispanics with a badge of inferiority, close quote. Justice Clarence Thomas implores us not to require today's young people to shoulder the moral debts of their ancestors, to use his words, because, quote, our nation should not punish today's youth for the sins of the past, close quote. There are lessons in this for us as we go to the ballot box for the referendum soon.